Hello everyone, this is going to be tutorial number nine in my Tetris series. And right off the bat, I wanted to correct something that I did incorrectly in the last one, and that is that I originally set up the grid, or I had the intention of setting up the grid so that this would be 0, 0, while well, this would be the position 1, 0. And while that's backwards to convention, that was going to technically have some uh, performance help because we'd be checking along 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, rather than to, to see if the row is full, rather than if we did 0, 0, uh, 1, 0, we'd be going along the x axis. So I actually want the y coordinate to come first. So we're just going to go through and fix that on everything. Just to flip those two uh, associations. And just so that the loops go the right way, we're going to go ahead and do it like this. And then the grid will be yx. And then the only other place that we should need to fix anything is going to be in draw grid. We're going to need to also swap all of these things around. And we'll need to swap y and x here as well. And now we should get the same result as before, but just to verify that it is working, if we comment out these two lines, we should see the first row and the second row with blocks in them. And that's interesting. Oh, right, these obviously need to be swapped. There we go. So the first and the second row have blocks in them. So now let's go ahead and fill up the whole second row of our grid. So we can do that with a simple for loop. And then grid 1x equals 0. So now if we run that, you can see we've got this whole row full. And there's a little bit of clipping on the edge, so that's something that we can look at at a later date. It's just because of the uh, screen not being a multiple of 25. So actually, if we just change this, oh, it is. It's just Java's extra width. Well, that's something... I'll figure out how to fix later. Just for now, we can ignore it. Um, our goal for this tutorial session is going to be to make this row get removed and have everything above it shift down. And let's wrap that all into two functions. One will be a public function. We check for removal, which will return the number of rows that we have removed. And the other one will be a private function because nothing should ever need to call this that will just remove whatever row we tell it to. So let's actually go ahead and implement this real quick. So the simple the simplest way to implement this is going to be to start on whatever row we're on. So int so with a for loop, uh, and then while y is greater than zero, we want to move up the grid and substitute in the previous rows things. So grid, so we'll do another for loop. And then grid of y x is going to be set to grid of y minus 1 x. So this 
line sets our current spot on the grid to the previous spot on the grid. And then on the last row, or the top row of our grid, we want that to all be set to negative one. Because there is no row to move down onto it. So now we can just go ahead and check that that works by trying to remove grid one, or row one. So if we go ahead and remove row one, you can see that there is no longer this row. If I comment it out, that row is back. And then just to verify that these blocks have indeed moved down one row like they're supposed to, let's set grid zero, zero equal to something so that we can see that yes, these blocks have indeed moved down a row. All right, now that that is taken care of, we can go ahead and actually just I noticed this right now. These should be square size just in case that number were to change at some point. It's good to have that constant be consistent across the file. So now that we know that remove row works, let's go through every row in our grid and see if it needs to be removed. And then just so we can get some feedback on that, let's go ahead and print that. So now however many rows get removed by our check for removal get printed out and then we can verify that things have moved down because we're going to be setting grid 0, 0 to 2. So now let's just go through every row. It's actually might be smarter to start. It really shouldn't matter. In fact, the benefit of doing it this way, this will ensure that every row above us has been checked, so we don't need to worry about decrementing this just in case our row needs to be uh, removed. The, the row that has replaced our current row needs to be removed. So this, we'll just go with it like this. So we're going to need to loop through every entry in that row. And we need some way to track if that row is a full row or not. So we'll just track that with a simple boolean. And let's just assume it's true. And then if at any point we find a square in our grid that is not occupied, then we know the row is not full. We can break out of the loop and we are done. And if we never find a grid space that is open, then we'll get through the whole loop and we'll say, okay, this row needs to be removed. So if the row is full, then we want to remove that row and simply pass in Y. Let's go ahead, give that a run. See, we removed zero rows and that is because we did not increment our rows removed counter. So now if we run it, we say we, we removed one row. So now let's say we want to test removing a couple of rows. So let's just say we set three also to something full. And why not? Let's also set five. So if we don't do any check for removal, what we get is this. And let's put blocks in between these grids just for visualization. So this needs to be 2, 2, and this would be 4, 4. And we can make these different colors so they're easier to tell apart. So now we've got this grid going on.
and let's put something below the last row that gets removed just as a reference point. So that's going to be 6, 0. Let's just set both of these to 0. This will be 6, 0 and 6, 1. So this line of blue, that's our bottom. So all of these should end up stacked on top of this blue. So now if we go back to our check for removal, you can see we removed three rows, and all of our things are stacked on here, and then this is back up at 0, 0, because we set it right here. So this is going to be, like I said, this is going to be a shorter one, but we have our checks for removal in, and now we just have to tie that to a, whenever a piece gets, a piece gets placed, and that will probably be the focus of my next video. So if you want me to continue making this content, leave a comment, leave a like, um, anything's appreciated. And if you want to see this continued, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.